Hey everybody, Michał from Tech Test Tutorials and in today's video we are going to build a NAS box. We are going to take a little bit obsolete hardware, use some old-fashioned DIY method and we will also deviate a little bit from the enterprise rules. Let's see how much we can achieve, shall we? Now this whole build uh, actually started with the box. I saw this box, uh, this case, and I thought, well, this could be a really handy small uh, NAS box. So I picked up this box before I realized that I wanted to install four hard drives inside. Actually, uh, it turned out that I could use only three uh, hard drives, three one terabyte hard drives, which would total in one point eight terabyte of CFS storage. But more on this subject a little bit later. Now, I'm not going to lie; I really assembled this uh, this NAS box before I started shooting the video. But we are going to. Uh, to rebuild this actually and I will be able to show you everything we've got inside. Now for the motherboard I've chose this random gigabyte that I have lying somewhere in a closet and along the side it came with a CPU it was Core to Duo E55 a double all 2.8 uh, gigahertz processor. Now the great thing about this CPU and this motherboard for this project it's actually not designed to build a NAS box, it was designed to be a low-end uh, office computer. Uh, I installed a maximum amount of RAM that was uh, possible in this computer, which uh, turned out to be 4 gigabytes. Now, some of you that may be a little bit familiar with uh, FreeNAS are going to shout uh, right now at the moment, wait a minute, what is this guy doing? This system is not uh, even matching the minimum requirements of FreeNAS. Yes, I know, this is just an experiment. The only rule that I've decided to follow was one gig of uh, RAM for uh, each terabyte of storage and I am going to bend uh, a little bit all the other rules. Now, we've got four gigs of RAM and three one terabyte drives in a ZFS. This is going to get us 1.8 terabyte of storage and these drives are used, actually. They have been working for a couple of years now. Now I have started uh, a smart test. They are all in the perfect condition and maybe if you are going to build uh, free NAS for you, you should not uh, try to do the same. Maybe you should buy the drives, but what the hell I thought, well, I've got these drives lying. Let's do experiment. Let's uh, test how reliable this is going to be. Now I will have backup of all this data. data. I am not crazy. I am not going to place uh, the only copy of all my data on used uh, hard drives in a ZFS that is not in an error corrected memory system. However, uh, I have been using this for two months, scrubbing the data every once in a while and it works perfectly. So I'm very, very happy. Although uh, I am, uh, I know that this is not the way that you should do, but what the hell, let's, let's try this. Now, one of the very few things that I actually bought from this for this build was this power supply. And it's extremely important one, because I wanted this build to be a quiet build. And second is because of uh, power efficiency. Now, uh, I have tried a random cheap crappy power supply for this build and it consumed from uh, 55 to 65 watts depending of uh, load of the system. Now take a look at the power consumption of this Be Quiet. This is going to be extremely important if you are going to run this NAS all the time. So pick up a decent power supply. 
Okay, there is another rule that I'm really going to follow and this is use Intel NICs. So this is one gigabyte, gigabit NIC from Intel. Uh, actually, you can pick up a used one. Also, these uh, NICs are never going to die. They cause zero problems uh, when you are using them with FreeNAS. They will give you a consistency while you will be transferring the data. Zero problems with installation configuration the only thing that didn't work on this NIC was Wake on LAN. Actually, I have decided to connect this NAS with uh, two NICs. One that was uh, actually on board of this motherboard and second for the, the data transmission will be this Intel NIC. Now I have Wake on LAN with Magic Packet. I can wake this NAS from my phone, from my router, but all the data are going to travel through this uh, Intel NIC. They tend to be a little bit pricey, but if you try to pick a used one uh, on an Amazon, on an eBay, maybe you will, uh, you will be able to buy this really really cheap um, like 10 20 bucks this may really happen if you will try to buy a new one you probably will pay more now we need something to install the system and to boot the system from and the best option uh, you can get is install this on a uh, on a pen drive. Uh, actually it's not a great idea to stick the pen drive in the back of this motherboard. It's better to install this inside uh, of the case uh, like I have done this with this uh, small uh, bracket that I've took from the old case. Now you could use this However, uh, the problem with uh, compact flash adapters is sometimes you get a DMA43 uh, compact flash adapter and if you are going to use anything uh, above uh, FreeNAS 8, uh, you will have this problem. So during the installation, it will tell you that the uh, DMA is limited to uh, 33 and it actually caused the problem. It crashed and did it want to start. Actually, a very nice you can use uh, two zip ties to install uh, is install this dongle inside to have this pen drive inside. Actually, the uh, FreeNAS is designed to be ran from a pen drive. Now, speaking about zip ties and do it yourself methods, uh, I wanted to show you all the tools that I have used uh, for this build. Uh, you don't need actually that much, you don't need uh, color matching zip ties or so, but I thought, well, we could uh, make this look a little bit better. Uh, it's very important to use the zip ties because you want to have a decent airflow. Now, the one problem that I had is actually this uh, case is designed uh, to have uh, only two uh, three and a half inch drives, but by using some zip ties, I have installed the third drive. Also, I've added some this uh, a little bit of rubber uh, underneath uh, the third drive in order not to have any vibration uh, on the case from the drive. It actually uh, looks pretty slick, I guess, and didn't cause any problems. All the drives were installed as I wanted to. Now, I wanted to install four of them, however, not enough RAM, not enough place, and this could get a little bit too hot. Uh, as I ran the test uh, in this case, not uh, much airflow, uh, not, uh, I didn't install any additional fans, but uh, the temperature inside of the case was okay, so no problem here. So now we are able to install actually the free NAS. The version that I've chose is 8.3.2 because I'm not going to use any jails, any virtualization stuff. This is going to be just plain simple uh, NAS box file uh, server uh, for Mac and for PC at the same time. The same uh, data store will be used uh, for this two file system. So the configuration will be also a little bit bent of the rules and I will show you the whole configuration as I have done this in the next video. So definitely stay subscribed and hit that like button because uh, this really helps me out. It encourages me to produce more video and just around the corner is the epic conclusion 
and uh, some benchmarks uh, of this NAS box. So thank you very much and see you next time.